We'll call the 11th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. <clears throat> Sue, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Berg? Here. Bonet? Here. Serta? Here. Graf? Here. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Perez? Here. Peterson? Here. Rinflesh? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Excuse. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Wangaman? Here. Ann Warner? Here. 15 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Warner? I thank your honor. Move the minutes of the last common council meeting be approved and that the same stand is entered on the record. Moving to the second at the minutes of the previous council meeting stand <coughs> approved. Under discussion. <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Bonet, would you lead us in a pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Confirmation of Mayor's appointments. It was dated uh, August 16th. I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Joseph Clark to be considered for appointment to the Architectural Review Board to fill the unexpired term of Richard Lundeen, whose term expires 4-30-06, signed by the mayor. That can be confirmed. Hold on, Warner. I thank your honor. I move to approve. We have a motion before us in a second. All in, is there any discussion? Not all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Public forum, Sue? Uh, Joanne Scribner. If you could step up to the mic, Joanne. And I need your home address, please. 3 Seneca Trail, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. 3 Seneca Trail. Okay. And you have five minutes. First of all, I would like to thank Mayor Schramm and the Sheboygan Common Council for the opportunity for me to speak here tonight. Question, have you walked the block around Sheridan Park lately? Have you noticed the beautiful green grass and the green leafy trees put there by God for us to enjoy? Did you notice the new playground equipment, the two new basketball hoops, and the nice cement basketball area, the nicely mulched playground area, the bench to sit on, the two baby swings, the six older child adult swings, a blue something that is hard to spin, maybe a merry-go-round would be better in that particular spot. Did you notice the two cute, colorful little kid rides in the sandbox? Did you notice the two blue litter barrels enclosed in a rectangular brown fence on a cement slab? Did you notice the Civil War monument dedicated to the men and women of Sheboygan County who served in that war, 1961 or 1861-65? Did you notice that that monument is dated May 7, 1938, which is 66 years ago? And then, did you notice the nice uh, Sheridan Park, City of Sheboygan, Sheridan Park sign with the Lake S logo on it, original plat of 1846, which is 158 years ago. Do you see any kind of historical significance here? Did you notice that the Sheridan Park sign is surrounded by a nice circular sidewalk and tall grasses and flowers? Did you notice that there's a bus stop on the east side of South 14th and Virginia Avenue? Have you noticed the heavy traffic on South 14th Street? Did you notice that Sheridan School is right kitty corner across from the park, across on South 14th? Have you noticed the children crossing the street near the park and the school going to and coming from school? and the parents and the buses dropping children off and picking them up from school, and the crossing guards 
And this is a good site for a police station. Responding to a possible suicide or murder alert during those crucial school hours? Is this not a grave safety concern? Should the Sheboygan Police Department have a fine, beautiful, big, state-of-the-art new police station? Of course they should, and as soon as possible, ASAP, but not on Sheridan Park. What is wrong with the North 23rd site and other sites that you may, may have been considering? Again, walk on South 13th Street between Virginia and Illinois Avenues. Notice the beautiful tree-lined streets, the quiet residential area. Now, imagine the police sirens going on day and night. Who knows what hours the police sirens are going on in this quiet, or used to be quiet, residential area. Now, one thing I did notice, at, uh, I was, I've been to the park several times lately. One thing I did notice, uh, there are kids that do play in the park. Now, if you add a few more swings, a nice slide, a nice mirror ground, volleyball net really attracts kids. Just go past, past Roosevelt and King Park sometimes see the kids playing volleyball. That wouldn't be too expensive to add a couple of wooden poles and a net, I don't think. I did not notice any gang activity. I did not notice any backward caps on kids, which of course does not mean gang activity necessarily. And I did not notice any spray paint graffiti anywhere. Just kids playing is all I noticed. A friend of mine mentioned a possible scenario. Some adults are going to walk into the new police station on the former Sheridan Park. They will ask, where are the trees? Some children will walk through the new police station on Sheridan, the former Sheridan Park, and they'll say, where are the swings? I'm sorry, We're, time is up, five minutes. Okay, just one more line. How are the police going to respond to the children? Where is our neighborhood park? My plea for all of you, as Jerry Lewis would say, save Sheridan Park and do it for the kids. Thank you. Okay, next up is Vicki Meyer. Vicki, if you could give me your address again. It's 3107 North 26th Street. And you will have five minutes. Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> Council, thank you for letting me speak again on the subject of Sheridan Park. I don't know if you realize how much pain your <clears throat> you have caused me and the community with your decision to destroy Sheridan Park. When all this started, we, the silent majority, trusted you to make the right choice, but you let us down. So our only alternative was to form a group and save the park ourselves. The Friends of Sheboygan's Parks have started a petition drive. We are finding at least 90% of the people of Sheboygan are signing them. Some of the comments your constituents have said to me are, we can't believe they are going to take our park. I thought it was going to be 23rd Street. I've even heard a lot of people say, recall, like they did in Milwaukee. And that's a strong statement. So yes, the people of Sheboygan are very upset, but there is still time to fix this. And I would like to invite all of you to come to Sheridan Park on Saturday, September 11th. Bring your picnic basket and a chair because we have no tables and benches and things there. And meet, meet us, talk to us. Meet the neighbors that live in Sheridan Park. Come and see what you want to take away. So please, come and join us. We would love to see you all there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki. Um, Renee Susha. Renee, can you give me your address again, please? Sure. Renee Susha, 303 St. Clair Avenue. Okay, you have five minutes. Okay, tonight I have four issues to talk about. 
Uh, none of this information should be new to any alderman. If I say anything that you are not aware of, it's because too many decisions maybe uh, are being made behind closed doors and you're not privy to the information. Uh, you'll be happy to know that I'm not here to voice my opinion on where to build the police station. Um, I'm personally not fond of either site, so <laughs> I'll leave that one alone. Um, but I do have some suggestions for you before you turn over the first shovel of dirt. Um, before you approve any building plans, you must reach agreement with Sheboygan County on shared services. According to the Police Needs Assessment and Site Analysis Study, the new police station will have a very large state-of-the-art communication center. As a taxpayer in the city of Sheboygan, I pay for both the county communication center, uh, operated out of the sheriff's department, and also the city communication center, operated out of the police station. This duplication of equipment and overhead expenses is a huge waste of taxpayer money. Uh, there is a difference between what one needs and what they want. In my opinion, the proposed police station uh, is full of desires and a little waste. For example, they currently function, I believe, with two restrooms. Do they really need to put in 12 bathrooms in this new building? I know it would be very challenging for the police department to share bathrooms with the sheriff's department, but I think sharing the communication center must be worked out as soon as possible. As a taxpayer, I'd like to see a more creative, fiscally responsible uh, decision made for the new police station versus building the Taj Mahal at my expense. Secondly, I'd like to comment on the new fire station that the city wants to build on the edge of Sheboygan, practically in the town of Wilson. Uh, when I checked about two weeks ago, uh, this project was still slated to be on the books for 2005, and I don't know in the past two weeks if that's changed or not. But before you turn over the first shovel of dirt on that project, I would suggest approaching the town of Wilson to discuss annexation. Now is the time to sell them on our delicious water and beneficial sewer system before you sweeten the pot uh, with the safety of a new fire station. It's a great bargaining tool. Uh, if you approve to build the fire station without annexation, the town of Wilson will benefit from the mutual aid pact. This means that whenever there's a fire in the town of Wilson, the new Sheboygan Fire Department will have to respond at the Sheboygan taxpayer's expense. So please do not build this fire station without annexation of the town of Wilson. Thirdly, I'd like to comment on the seven-page budget survey that was given to all the aldermen. It appears that 13 of you replied, and of course the section of questions that really caught my attention were the questions relating to room tax. Uh, someone forgot to request your input on one of the most important issues. Where was the question asking if room tax money should be used to pay the debt of the conference center? The room tax lawsuit clearly states room tax money can be used to fund a convention center not a conference center. If you want to gamble with the taxpayer's money and let Judge Langhoff rule on this, go right ahead. After all, Judge Langhoff was the city attorney who set up the collection of room tax in 1983. The only reason I'm bringing this to your attention is because I think uh, there's a strong possibility the mayor and city attorney are withholding information like this from you. And I want you to be informed. I strongly encourage all of you to start asking a lot of questions about this lawsuit before it's too late. Lastly, I'd like to give you an example of a local governing body who is not trying to withhold any secrets from its board or its public. The school board deserves to be commended on the steps they have taken to educate the public on their upcoming referendum to build a new grade school and high school gymnasium expansion. The process, and I want to emphasize the process they implemented to educate the public is outstanding. At the end of last school year, every child who attends the Sheboygan Public Schools was sent home with literature on the upcoming referendum. A dozen or so listening sessions were held at, for community input, where the school board listened to the suggestions uh, that the community had, and they provided answers to their questions. And most recently, I was very impressed last week when I went to the open house uh, to find a table set up with, with diagrams, and somebody was there to answer questions again about the referendum. And it's my understanding that every single school in the city of Sheboygan had these uh, resources at their fingertips last week for the open houses. This council should learn from their examples of open dissemination of information. After all, they are going through this big process for just an advisory referendum, nothing binding. So my question to you is when is the last time this council surveyed the public to see what they want? Thank you. Steve, would you like to respond to that? Uh, on that, well, what's your opinion? On, 
her comment about holding back information that Judge, Judge Langkoff has on the conference center? No. Either the mayor or I have been holding back anything. Uh, there's a there's a hearing about a week and a half ago as to whether or not Great Lakes could remain as a party to the lawsuit because the plaintiffs uh, redid their complaint for the third time and uh, proposed to take out Great Lakes as a party as a defendant. Great Lakes was interested in the project and interested in the, the city's use of room tax and pleaded with the court to remain a party to the lawsuit and the court allowed Great Lakes to stay in as a party. Uh, that's where we are. We've got a scheduled schedule for filing uh, summary judgment motions next Monday. Um, and then the plaintiffs have 30 days in which to respond to those, and we've got another 30 days to respond to those. So that's, that's where we are in the lawsuit. It is true that uh, one of the allegations that the plaintiffs are now making is that uh, cities funding of the convention center with room tax dollars uh, violates the law, that it violates the public purpose doctrine. Uh, it's kind of interesting because uh, uh, we had communications over about two years ago, I think, from the uh, Sheboygan Lodging Group that was very supportive of the, uh, the city funding the convention center with room tax dollars. Okay. But uh, uh, now they're saying it's, you know, we're violating the law by doing that. So we'll have to see. It'll be a while yet before the judge uh, renders any decision. Uh, as issues come up, we'll be presenting those to the council uh, for your input. Okay. Thank you, Steve, for your clarification. Okay. Before we get into the agenda, we're going to do the closed session. Just a little different tonight. We have a closed session with Redevelopment Authority. Uh, Alderman Warner, you're going to pull that forward, and then we'll go back into the consent agenda. Correct? So, would you like to make a motion? On that, Your Honor, I would like to pull forward uh, document number 1167, and I would move to convene and closed session under the exemption, exemption provided in section 19.851E of the Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of deliberating the consent request by the Great Lakes Companies Incorporated where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session. We have a motion and a second before us. Alderman Wright, please. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just clarification of why necessarily we need to pull this ahead right now instead of doing it at uh, document 1167. Clarification why we're pulling this forward. Uh, we've got redevelopment authority people here, uh, Eric. Uh, we've got a representative from Great Lakes, and the thought was to uh, to have that joint meeting with redevelopment authority now, so that the redevelopment authority members could leave, uh, and the Great Lakes person could go back to Madison. Yeah, less for me, but more for people at home. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Yes. Pardon? Yes. <laughs> Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinflesh? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Warner? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. We will be back right after closed session, so if anyone wants to stick around, I don't think it's going to take... I wouldn't anticipate hour. it would take too long, but it's going to be dependent on questions by the council and the redevelopment authority. And then we'll go back into open session, so if you want to stick around, please do so. 10 minutes? 3 minutes? 15 minutes? No. Probably 20 minutes. Most. Take a two-minute break until everybody clears out, and we'll go be in closed session. Uh, <clears throat> Bellman. Still here. 
Berg? Uh, here. Bonet? Here. Serta? Here. Graf? Here. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Perez? Here. Peterson? Here. Rinflesh? Here. Sagali? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Wangaman? Here. Warner? Here. 15 present. Forms present. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move the RO be accepted and placed on file and that the resolution be put upon its passage. Moved in. Second that the RO be accepted and placed on file and the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would you call Paulette? Excuse me. Correct. So you want to do that before we take our or thereafter? Go ahead. All right, we have a motion on the floor as well. Any discussion on the motion? Any discussion on the motion? Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed the same. The redevelopment uh, passes the motion. Thank you. Thanks. Going back to ours, we have a motion and a second on the floor. There's no other discussion. Would City Attorney, you want? Well, I don't want to. Okay. Would you call the roll then, please? Berg? Aye. <laughs> Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? This resolution is used by all of us staff, right? Correct. Yes. Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinflesh? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. And Bauman? 15 eyes. Motion carried. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for coming. <clears throat> Consent agenda. Alderman Warner. Well, thank you, Your Honor. I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file. All RCs be accepted and adopted. All resolutions, substitute resolutions, and ordinances be passed. Move to second that all RCs be accepted and adopted, ROs be accepted and filed, and resolutions put upon their passage. That's 11 1 through 11 22 under discussion. Alderman Press. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Steve, 11 19, 11 20. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't believe it's necessary, Alderman Perez. This is just to file notices of damage of injury. Uh, injury damage or injury that were filed two years ago uh, as a possible prelude to filing a claim no claims have been filed and so the motion on the floor would be just to place them on file I I, I don't see you have a problem with okay. fully on it. Uh, 11 14 11 14 11 14 is a uh, report of committee that has five items there's one in particular, number two, regarding to the peace poll. To the what? The peace peace poll. Peace poll. Okay. Larry McDonald, uh, yep. Larry, uh, Mr. Sandman, uh, right. Larry Sands McDonald had, has, uh, has approached us uh, at least twice asking that we uh, put a peace poll somewhere in the city. I know that it says here in the center of the Rotary of Indiana, but I believe at one point he said, just put it somewhere. And I, I guess I'm a little concerned that we haven't found a place for that Peace Bowl because it's such a small thing that has so much significance to, uh, to Larry McDonald and to the people they believe in his, in his message, uh, one, me being one. Uh, can I ask if any other locations were considered by that committee? Alderman Bowman? Your Honor, uh, by the Public Works Committee, no location has been considered. What we did say through committee, though, was that the uh, uh, Planning Commission would be the persons that would choose the uh, position of the poll, if it would be placed. So, do we refer it to Planning we Committee? Refer it to Planning I think it was already there. Has it been? I have No. Then I would, I would move, Your Honor, that uh, if I may pull that out, that we refer uh, reporting committee number 0405 number two relative to the peace poll being sort of, uh, requested by Larry Sands McDonald. Okay, hang on just a minute. 
All right. That document was referred to the plan commission. They took action. And from what I can recall, the action was that the roundabout, you know, that center location was already spoken for. Correct. And so I think they moved to file. That was my recollection. So you'd have to refer back and they'd have to consider another location. And that's what I'm asking. Yes. It'd be referred back to city planning for consideration. And uh, I say we're bound to find a place for it. It's a great idea. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Yeah, Larry approached me this last week about that also, and he has one in his front yard, so if you'd like to take a look at it, just drive by Larry's yard. Uh, he has one up there. It means a lot to him. It means a lot to the community, so hopefully we can find some more for it. Tenth and Broadway? Okay. Okay, is there any other discussion? That's 11-1 through 11-22. If not, would you call the roll, please? <clears throat> Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinflesh? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. And Berg? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 11.23 through 11.30 to be referred. 11.31 through 11.46 to be referred. Alderman Frank Flesch. Oh, there you go. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, 11.32, I'd like to pull that one forward and um, move to file 11.32. Who seconded it? I'm sorry. Who seconded it? Maryland. Uh, Maryland. Thank you. Okay. A few under months discussion. ago, under discussion, uh, I spoke. There was another letter that came through regarding the city attorney and the mayor that I moved to file as well instead of going to law and licensing or ethics board. Uh, we had a presentation, just to sum up again, uh, many months ago. Um, ethics issues really revolve around if anybody has any proof or any claim that an alderman is profiting from their position financially. And we both had uh, an attorney as well as our own city attorney's office uh, gave that recommendation. And much like I did several months ago when I said, you know, an issue is political, it's not ethical based on our ethical standards. If we want to adjust our, our ethical standards, we can do so on our committee. But once again, I don't see the point of uh, uh, you know, every letter that comes across our desks complaining about any, any, any one of us here used to always go to law and licensing when there is no claim of financial impropriety. Mm -hmm. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Mayor. Just a question for Steve. Should I abstain from this one? Thank you. Okay. Alderman Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in this one in particular, it's a resubmission of the original letter, and that was additionally addressed by two attorneys that it did not meet the criteria. Thank you. Alderman Bonet. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to address the fact is that it is not a resubmission because the original letter was actually two letters, and this has some similarities but is not the same letter and does address a couple other issues. As the chairman of the committee, I believe when it's referred to committee, and this is something we had to review as the Law and Licensing Committee being, in essence, a branch of the Ethics Committee, the fact is that it gives the opportunity for the letter writer to speak to the committee when addressing the issue. Otherwise, the, if it's filed off the floor, it won't have, nobody will ever have a chance to speak on the issue of being a constituent. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Warner. I uh, thank you, Honor. I guess I too feel that we should send it to committee. We have that process in place. You know, being thrown into this thing a year ago and all the things we went through under discussion, uh, it was brought forth that that's what law and licensing is supposed to do with issues like this. It, it doesn't really matter so much what we think on, on a case like this, but I do see that this is not the same one that came in last time. In fact, I think those documents are on our agenda and they were filed already. I think this should go to the committee, let the committee do its job. If it same, meets the same muster, it'll get filed in that committee and come through here again. I think it's important that uh, that process that we talked about <coughs> six, seven months ago gets followed. That's what it's there for. Uh, there's no need to consider ethics board or anything like that until the Law and Licensing Committee makes a determination on where something should go. I think uh, that's why we have that process set up. So, Alderman Reinflesch. Thank you, Your Honor. 
my concern is, isn't necessarily individual that's been claimed or the issue being claimed, or if it's the second time around or the first time around. My issue really is precedence that we're going to set. Uh, we filed other documents earlier today that were correspondence from people, and not necessarily claiming one person or another person did this, but their communications to the council. We read those documents. If someone can po point out where there's an accusation here of something that is improper versus someone complaining, um, you know, we're all subject to that. And if we set the precedence that anytime someone wants to throw ideas out there without an accusation that someone needs to defend, then we're all going to be sitting at Law and Licensing Committee every time, all 16 of us. Um, I fully defend this gentleman's right to write a letter. Uh, we've all read the letter. It's public. It goes out to uh, the media and everybody else. I mean, there's no secret behind the letter. Uh, my fear is that we're all 16 of us every time one constituent disagrees with us. Instead of the political process, which is elections, we're going to be sitting in law and licensing all the time for every accusation. Unless something is here that says that by our ethics code, uh, an alderman is using a position for financial impropriety, which I don't see in here. Um, and I, I still vote to, to file uh, just to prevent the precedence from being set of all 16 of us sitting in there every other week in law licensing. Mm -hmm. Correct. Alderman Montemayor, to the motion. The motion to file, yes, as we do, as, as Alderman um, Eric Renfleisch reiterated, we do receive lots of letters. We read them, we think about them, and we file them. And this letter falls in the same category. We read them, we think about it, we'll file it. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Spenderell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, about the motion to file, I just want to specify the reason why I won't file it is because of this part of the sentence where it says, a conflict of interest for Alderman Perez's personal agenda and apparent support for a $34 million school district spending program. That I didn't know, and I feel maybe that should be investigated. Thank you. Alderman Serda. Thank you, Honor. I guess I'm going to need some direction from Steve um, concerning the ethic code because if, if we're making decisions on filing some and not others, it's going to give maybe the perception that we're um, choosing favoritism. So I'm going to ask for your discretion on this one. If, if indeed it doesn't um, violate any of the ethics codes, considering that I guess we filed things in the past without them being referred to a committee. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Serta, you know, you know, I guess the initial uh, reaction to these things is the ethics board, which is you as the common council. I guess my looking at it, it appears to be a political issue, uh, concern about uh, an alderman supporting, uh, uh, you know, saving the park perhaps. I don't know that there's anything ethically wrong with that. I mean, people are allowed to have different opinions, even those that are on the council. Uh, supporting school spending programs as opposed to $7 million police station. I don't see that as an ethical issue. Uh, it, there again, that's really a political issue, a uh, uh, judgment issue by an alderman. Uh, if an alderman doesn't believe a police station is warranted or, or for whatever reason, he certainly got the right to uh, have that opinion without creating an ethics problem and it really doesn't have anything to do, I don't think, with the proposed school referendum. Uh, so my view of it is that I wouldn't see inherently here any sort of ethics violation. Uh, I, I know the previous letters from Mr. Latree were referred to law and licensing. Uh, I wasn't at the meeting, but I'm aware that looking at the minutes that law and licensing recommended filing the communications. Now, you could do the same thing this time if you wanted, but uh, I don't really, that's my take on it. Now, again, the ethics board of which law and licensing has been designated as the uh, subcommittee to initially review matters uh, can look at it differently. Uh, I'm there to advise the council and the ethics board when asked, uh, but ultimately it's the council that makes those sorts of decisions as to uh, ethical violations or not. I just don't see that it, it's 
uh, clear cut enough as a personal or financial interest issue that would clearly be a, an ethics code violation sort of issue. Okay. okay. Alderman Warner on the... I guess on a motion to file, Your Honor, the reason I, I don't want to uh, support that is because I think that the individual that wrote this should, be, should have an opportunity to come to a committee meeting. That's where we send documents to address it at the committee meeting. At the last meeting when those other documents was there, I came from, I believe, uh, Municipal Court Committee meeting and went over to that meeting when it was at that time, or actually no, it was a uh, plan commission and went to that meeting and the individual that wrote those letters wasn't there either. Uh, perhaps we give them an opportunity to come. Uh, do I see anything major here? Well, there's some things that maybe may be of concern to one person and maybe not to another. But I just think that you give the, the people out there an opportunity to speak at the committee meetings and voice what their concerns were. Uh, if, if it had to go someplace, that would be the committee to send it to law and licensing, and that's where I think it should go. Okay. On a motion, Alderman Segal. Uh, yes, I just feel enough's enough. We need to get on with this. Just, I don't care who it is here. We need not to be doing this anymore. We're just going to keep going on and on and on. Somebody made a motion to file. Let's get on with it and let's file. Okay. If there's no other Thank discussion. You. Thank you. If there's no other discussion. You want to call the roll, please? This is a mo motion to file. Right. Correct. Okay. Uh, Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Let's see. Peterson? Aye. Rinflesh? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? No. Motion carried. Okay, now we're, I lost track, 1146 we're at, okay. Is there anything else in a referral? Anything else? All right, 1147 by Alderman Groff for an initial resolution regarding industrial development revenue bond series 2004 financing for Nemshoff Chair Inc. in amount not to exceed $5 million. Alderman Groff. Hang on. A point of order, we voted on the motion to file. Do we vote on the, well, oh, they're just automatically referred. We don't have to vote on their No, it was referred. Thank you very much. All referred. Thank you. Alderman McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, that resolution along with resolution 1148, which is an initial resolution uh, regarding industrial development revenue bond series 2004 financing for, yeah, Pataplast. Padanoplast, thank you, USA Inc., in the amount not to exceed $3 million two. I would move that those two resolutions be put upon their passage. Second. Moved and second that both resolutions be put upon their passage. Under discussion, Alderman Warner. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, since we had some discussions on uh, manufacturing businesses in the community lately, I just thought this was important, and, and I'd like to say on 1147, I think it's great to see Nemshoff Chairs expanding its operations in the city. Exactly. And, and I hope this initial resolution is successful and look forward to increased manufacturing jobs in, in, in the city of Sheboygan. I'd like to thank Nemshaw for continuing to invest in the city. And for Padanoplast uh, USA Incorporated, again, as in the previous resolution, I'm very happy to see Padanoplast purchasing and installing new equipment at its Crocker Avenue facility. And I think this is another sign the city of, Sheboy of the city of Sheboygan's health and vitality in its manufacturing sector. As before, big thanks to uh, Padanoplast for investing not only in its future, but in the future of the city of Sheboygan. Thanks. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? If not, would you call the roll, please? Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinflesh? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Bonet? 15 eyes. Motion carried. Okay, 11.49 will lie over. 11.50 through 57 to be referred. Thank you for coming this evening. Thank you. 11.58 and 59 to be referred. Alderman Bonet. Uh, thank you, Your Honor, for 11... for 11.60. Oh, you're jumping for 11.60, okay. <laughs> 11.60 by law and licensing, recommending filing various documents. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and adopt the report of the committee. Second. Moved and second to accept and adopt the report of committee. Under discussion. Alderman Perez. Your Honor, I will be abstaining. Okay. Anyone else? If not, would you call the roll, please? Graf. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Rinflesh. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. And Serta. Aye. 14 eyes, one abstention. Motion carried. 1161 through 1164 to be referred. By the way, thank you. You do a nice job on these agendas. Oh, <laughs> they're really fast. They're good. No, it's good. <laughs> 1165 will lie over. Alderman Warner. Uh, Your Honor, on, you said 1161 through 1164 to be referred? Correct. 63 and 64 reports of committee. Oh, oh let's back go up, back. back up. Thank you. Yep. Okay. 1163 and 64 reports committee. Okay. You're right. Correct. All of them grow. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move under 1163, which is the RC that was referred to our committee um, on finance from um, salary and grievance as well as from public protection and safety, recommending hiring of three police officers, one now and two at the end of uh, 2004. Um, uh, we have found that funds are not presently available to hire an officer in 2004. The committee therefore recommends um, including the hiring in, of, an of, of the officers in 2005 budget unless funds become available someplace else in 2004. And therefore, I would move that we'd accept and adopt and place the document on file. We have a motion before us to accept and adopt the document and place it on file. Under discussion, Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I believe we should not support this document and will vote against accepting and adopting it. Uh, the Public Protection and Safety Committee recommended last spring the hiring of three patrol officers. The mayor agreed in a memo to Alderman Van Akron that we should hire one patrol officer this year and two at the beginning of 2005 if funds were ab available. The Salary and Grievance Committee reviewed the request that came from Public Protection and Safety and, did re and the mayor's memo and did recommend adding one officer now and two at the be beginning of 2005 should funds become available. The Finance Committee did not approve using money from the Police Department's own salaries account to fill one of the three open positions on the Police Patrol Division. I disagree with that decision. The, the Department has $46,000 in its salaries account and would need about $20,000 to put one officer on the street for the rest of this year. The remaining 26000 would still be there for finance to use as it sees fit. The money is there. Public Protection and Safety recommended it. Salary and Grievance recommended it. And the Mayor recommended it. I still think we should fill this one position this year. And I encourage the Council to support filing uh, this document and eventually filling all the posi positions that are open in the Police Department. And if we do file this, I will uh, make a motion uh, to have the proper documents drawn up to use the money in this fund to hire one police officer this year and uh, bring that back to the next council. Alderman Graff. You know, uh, after discussion in finance uh, with the monies that may become available in, um, in the uh, police department, they're also being used or being looked at for covering some of the overages and the other accounts that they do have going right now, specifically um, police overtime. It's a huge account that, um, that is, at this point in time, I'd have to refer to Rich, but I think it's about 100 and, pardon me? 100,000. 100,000 overspent at this particular time. Uh, therefore, we couldn't find any additional funding for, um, for a police officer, and, um, and that's what our recommendation is. Thank you. Alderman um, Segal. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would almost assume that since we've already passed this, that we were going to hire a police officer. I don't understand now why all of a sudden there is no money for it. You would think that common sense would tell you that overtime could be prevented if we hired another officer. So I feel that um, uh, we need to uh, uh, hire an officer in the 2004. If I may answer that. Go ahead. Uh, just, uh, it was never approved. It was 
part of the discussion was if finance can find the funds for this, and we were unable to. Now, if it's going to come from another committee, and they're going to come up with some funds, uh, this council has to vote on that. But finance could not find any additional funds available for that position. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, when I, when I came to our committee, there was $20,000 that was available for this one officer. And I thought the Common Council did approve that one officer. And I, I don't know where the 20000 went, but that's what we were relying on. Okay. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Mayor. And I, I was one of those people that voted to, uh, to hire a police officer with the understanding that the money was there, and I believe all, uh, Alderman Van Akron is correct. That the, we were told at that time that there was money. I don't know what happened either, but if the police department uh, and your honor feel that, uh, that the hiring of a new police officer now uh, can be absorbed in the cost, then by all means I would support it. If, if we don't have the money, we don't have the money. But if, if you feel that we, we, we can find that money there, then by all means I would support this again. Alderman Warner. Thank you, your honor. A little bit about the overtime. Uh, after being down three officers this year, eight officers in 2003, and seven officers in 2002, this past year, the finan finance had the police department reduce its overtime budget artificially by $120,000 over what was requested to meet the 2004 budget goals. With the understanding that that money would be replaced by a transfer from the cable TV fund and other sources of revenue. Not, the money was not replaced, and now they're holding the fact that the department is short in its overtime budget up as something that is a reason why they can't use part of this $46,000 in their salaries account to cover it. They want it, the finance department wants them to use that money. There's $20,120 in the telecommunicator's salary account that could be used for this officer. The other $26,000 is projected salary savings at the end of the year. And that money would still be there. Projections are probably a accurate. I guess I've seen enough flip-flopping on filling the police department's needed positions in the past couple of years. And if you want to argue overtime, argue it when the department is fully staffed. Not when there is the continuing need to put cops on the streets using overtime because they are not at full strength. I think the public believes that we need a fully staffed police department. At that time, we can address those overtime concerns a lot easier. Uh, there's a, a whole lot of things that need to be looked at in this budget year, but we keep putting this off and putting this off. And when we were down eight officers in 2003, the police patrol division alone, the total overtime budget in 2003 was $359,622. We were down eight officers in 2003. In 2002, we were down seven officers. The overtime account in that year was $299,346. In 2004, we're down three officers, but they took $120,000 out of the overtime budget to make the budget meet. And now, how are you supposed to make that up? You still have to, you have to have more people working overtime. It's just not right. That money should have been put back in there. We're talking an estimated, just for the patrol division, of one and a half officers in overtime paid out in 2004, just, just in the patrol division. You have two, one and a half complete officers just in overtime in the over budgeted amount. If we get, these, get this department up to its full staffing and then we deal with the overtime issues, we can probably manage them much easier. The money's in that account. As I said, I will be making a motion after this if we file this document to have documents drawn up to bring forward to the next council meeting that we can vote on this. And if something changes by then, something changes by then. But I think that's the way to go. We'll give it a shot once it's about time. I'm glad you said uh, about overtime, Alderman Warner clarified that because even if we did, we're at full staff, there's still overtime that we have to address in, in public protection and safety, but you're correct. Alderman Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Alderman Warner, you're, you're asking for us to file this document and you to bring another document forward then after this? We would have to vote this document down, and then I would like to make a motion to have a uh, document drawn up. 
Well, he's asking to file it, and you stated you wanted it filed also. That's he's right. asking that, that it be uh, filed, but I, I want us to vote to file it, and then I'm going to make a motion, correct? So I you're asking it. to have it filed? Mm -hmm. Yes. You're asking the same thing. Right. Correct, Steve? That's, that, that's why I, I just want clarification on. Steve, I need you to clarify that. No, wait a minute. No, you. No, that's right. not right. No, hang on. The recommendation is to, because there's no funding available, right. and unless funds become available in 2004, there's not going to be an officer uh, hired in 2004. Uh, Uh, the, the motion on the floor is to accept and adopt to accept the report and adopt of committee. The, and what? Which is what it said. Accept and adopt the RC and file the report. Yeah, you you don't Alderman Warner, I believe what you're asking is if you're accepting and adopting and filing the report, that means you're not going to get an officer. What you want to do is hold that open for that part-time position to be filled. Correct? Correct. Not part-time, excuse me. Accepting and adopting this report committee that we disagree with, correct, Steve? Yeah, I think the issue is uh, where it says in the committee report that Committee states that the funds are not presently available to hire an officer in 2004. There seems to be some issue about that. Alderman Warner is arguing that there are funds available, right. um, which is contrary to what it, it says in the committee report. Okay, what I'm asking you, Steve, is what's the proper motion that needs to move this forward so that we can bring in another document? I guess I would suggest to bring in another document that's different than this would be to file this, to place it on file, and not to adopt it, but to place it on file, and uh, have another document drawn. Okay, the motion that, that was on the floor is to accept and adopt and file a report. Accept and adopt the report of committee and file that, that, that uh, you know, it's a little semantic. So you have I think, to as I that, said, that one statement is, there occurs to be a conflict on, but the recommendation is to hire an officer in 2005 budget unless funds become available in 2004. Uh, I guess what you're arguing, Alderman Warner, is that funds can become available in 2004 because they're available right now, which is somewhat inconsistent with in, in the committee report, but. Uh, you could probably still bring in a document, no matter what happens to this, uh, saying that there are funds available in 2004, we should hire an officer. And you could have that drawn tonight. And I understand that, but we are saying to accept and adopt the report of committee and file that file issue. That. And I don't want to accept and adopt the report of committee, I want to file the report of committee. Just file it. Make that I can't because there's a motion on the floor. <laughs> yes. On that, I would move to file. Second. Okay, we have a motion on the floor and a second to file this document. And under discussion, Chief, would you like to speak, please? Maybe clarify some of this. I'm not sure if I can clarify this or not. <laughs> what about the money? The money part. <laughs> As of this morning, I believed $120,000 was not put in there. And I believed that the $46,000 that was expected to be extra revenue was being used to account for the $120,000 budgetary shortfall. I've been assured now by Rich that the $120,000 was placed in there, that there is now an additional $100,000 deficit. Okay. So, if that's clarification, it's been clarified. <laughs> <laughs> I think what we need, if so in fact we're on... So there's still $46,000 in account salaries. No. no, because that is to pay for the $100,000. That's you're using that for the $100,000. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, just to clarify, when we reviewed the accounts, we were trying to cover the what we project to be a hundred thousand dollar shortfall in overtime. We have, we, we are projecting some balances and some of the accounts around twenty thousand each, but not enough for the hundred thousand. As we did the review, we saw more accounts that are projected to be over budget by year end, such as gasoline. Uh, we never found enough appropriations to cover the shortfall in overtime this year. Last year, we ran a similar um, overage in overtime, but there were turnover within the department, the shortfalls, as Alderman Werner uh, referred to, of, of the turnover in the department, and that covered the shortfall in overtime. We don't see that pattern this year, and that's what I brought to the Finance Committee and, and told them. We, I met with uh, the chief and his staff over this, and we reviewed every account that he has to try to find balances to cover the shortfalls plus funding an additional officer. We did not find that. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion to file before us. Would you call the roll, please? Perez. Hold it. Explain oh. what that means. Explain what that means. You're not, not accepting adopt and adopting, adopting this report filing. of committee by finance. You are filing it, which means you're not accepting their recommendation. You're filing it. Accept and adopt would mean you're accepting that they're saying what it says in here. You're not doing that by filing. Thanks, Mayor. I, I don't see how we can spend money we don't have. You know, if we file this document, they come back with a document to hire a police officer, we're going to write a check that's going to bounce. It just doesn't seem reasonable to me. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Ryan Flick. Just one last thing. Um, of all that confusion, I guess that's what I'm looking for a summary of. I'm for hiring a police officer. I'm for bringing in public works back up to staff. I know, don't know where that money's coming from, but we're already in 2004. My question is, if we file it and we come back with a document that we can vote to hire another one, where is that money coming from? Let me get Alderman Perez first. Was, okay, Alderman Perez. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And again, just... Just to parrot what Alderman Rinsley said, I have no problem. I wish we could hire five more police officers and put them up to par, but do we have the money? I, I, that's my question here. Okay. Somebody needs to tell me that. Alderman Warner. I think, well, there was money there uh, a week ago, and now all of a sudden it's disappeared. Well, that normally, that can happen pretty easily, which tells me something, that we can move that money from the cable TV fund, $20,000 if we like, or any other account. I think we can find the twenty thousand dollars someplace to hire one one police officer this year. There is money out there that's available. There's money in other accounts that's available. We'll have to figure out a way to come up with it. Obviously, it's not in this uh, two hundred one one thirty account, which had it a week or two ago or a week and a half ago, but it was there. I can tell you that much because we talked about it in committee, and I was there. Yes, so, we talked about it in seller agreements also. I still think we file this and we bring in a document. And we look for the money in the next two weeks and see if we can come up with it. Okay. There's no other. Oh, Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to say if we file this tonight and we don't find the money, then we don't hire a police officer. Correct. But, you know, we can file it and look. <laughs> Call the roll, please. This is to file. Perez. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Rinflesh. Aye. Sagali. You are voting to file this document, and then Alderman Werner or someone is going to bring in documents at the next council meeting to hire one police officer. Am I correct, Alderman Werner? And find the money somewhere. Aye. Okay. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Werner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. No. Manny. No. No. And Montemayor. No. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Motion ten. carried. Eleven ayes and four noes. Alderman Perez. I, excuse me, Alderman Warner. Right, thank you, Honor. That I would move that the com a, a proper document be drawn up to have the com that the Common Council directs that one police officer be hired this year using uh, funds that can be found available, and that the remaining two positions be filled on January first, two thousand five. Should should those funds become available and bring them back to the next council meeting? Press. Press. 
We have we have motion before us under discussion in a second. Go ahead, Alderman Montemayor. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. There is no document. It's being drawn up. It's going to be drawn up. Right. So I mean, there's nothing to to vote on tonight. Yes. Right. There is no paper to vote no. on. Nothing. No paper to vote on. But he's asking that you, you the document be drawn. Well, right. But that doesn't have to be done by the council. He's going to do that. No. He's asking the council to vote on it tonight to have the document drawn. Have the document drafted. drafted. That's what you're voting on now. <clears throat> we're, we're going to vote on whether we're going to draft a document? Correct. To hire a police officer. When have we voted on whether to draft a document? You did that many times on a council floor, brought documents to have them drafted on a council floor. Well, maybe not since you've been on, but that right. has been done. That has been okay. done. So. Alderman Rainflash. Just to clarify, we're voting on to draw the document, not whether to support the document or not. Correct. Correct. Exactly. <clears throat> okay. Is there any discussion? Any other discussion? Call the roll, please. This is to draw a document. Peterson. Aye. Rinflush. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Werner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. No. Manny. No. Montemayor. No. And Perez. Aye. Okay. 11 oh. eyes, 4 no's. Motion carried. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. I lost my train of thought here. 1164, by Public Works, recommending filing documents with regard to, des to designating land on the southeast corner of, so of 14th Street and Pennsylvania Avenue as a park. Alderman Baldwin. Well, thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second before us, under discussion. <laughs> Alderman Rainflush. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, uh, so those that were not involved in this document, the parcel that we're looking at is on the corner of 14th and Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, it is already designated or designated as a, what's the designation again? Okay, <laughs> excess right of way, uh, undesignated green space. It's already something that the city is maintaining. Uh, and further information, I think it would be an excellent spot for the Peace Pole. <laughs> and some people have been using it as a parking lot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Alderman Warner? Just briefly, Your Honor, I guess I know I went to that public uh, works meeting and they, they were planning on cleaning up that spot, possibly putting in a bench or two for people waiting for the bus, some plantings, <coughs> making it look nicer, and that might actually be a good place for the Peace Pole. So. And I would like to know from Tom if they've made any progress on it. The last time I drove by there, nothing had changed. It's something we're going to do this fall. You know, right now we're cutting grass, and after the grass slows down, we'll be, this fall we'll be done. Okay. Alderman Groff. Your Honor, um, if um, the RC, the Reporter Committee, is accepted and adopted, we would place this document on file. The resolution would be filed. That's their recommendation. That's correct. And there would be no designation of it as a parkland. Is that correct? That's what the document says. Okay, just wanted to make so sure. Everybody knows. Okay. <coughs> Let's call the roll on that one. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinflesh? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 1165 will lie over. 1166 will lie over. 1043 by Alderman Van Akron, Montemayor Perez Peterson, adopting code so as to change the class grade of Secretary Fire Department in the Fire Department. Okay. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I move that General Orange be put upon its passage. Moved and second the ordinance be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Alderman Groff. What, um, Your Honor, what is the cost associated with um, this change, if any? Okay, we have Chief behind <coughs> us. Chief? $800 a year. 
and that'll be coming out of your budget, correct? Okay. Alderman. This is one that we found out that was not brought up to grade at the time, and she has not been paid for months that grade, so we brought her up to grade. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, I need a roll call, please. Uh, Peterson. Aye. Rinflesh. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. And Perez. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. Other matters, 1168 will go to public protection and safety. Steve? Up children. That will go to public protection and safety. 1170 is a communication from the Sheboygan Professional Police Association offering their support for the decision to use Sheridan Park as the new police site. Building use. 1171 is a communication from Joe McKillops stating his reasons for not building a new police station at the Sheridan Park site. Building use. 1172 is a communication from Mary Bernke stating her upset with comments being made between all their persons during the discussion of the Sheridan Park site as the new police station. Building use. 1173 is a communication from Janet Van Akron indicating her concerns with using Sheridan Park as the site for the police station. Building use. Oh, hang on, hang on. Before we adjourn, we're gonna take some time. Rich, Rich didn't get a chance to present the budget to us in committee of the whole. Rich? Please. Thank you, Your Honor. I know it's been a long evening, so I'll try to be brief. Uh, in your packet tonight was the, the document uh, 1144, uh, bringing in the budget. At the back of that, there's four pages of uh, analysis of the requests. And if you haven't had a chance to look at that, I would hope that you will be able to during uh, the next few days. Uh, also placed on your memo uh, on your desk this evening, uh, to outline some of the main points. Uh, the, the main uh, area that I think you, you need to focus on here now is what, the, what we're facing here. The uh, requests from the general fund for 2005 are over four and a half million dollars or a 14% in increase. And the funding sources from this, the revenues are only supporting uh, 700,000 or a 2.3% increase. So we have a difference between there of over $3.8 million that is not funded. And on page three of that document that you have in the analysis, you'll see a listing of the uh, departmental reductions that would be uh, required in order to balance this at this point. And that's what the revenues, uh, assuming uh, the proposed 5.5% tax levy increase. I also outlined in there about the expenditure restraint program and uh, what we received from the state that uh, the, it appears the maximum would be about a 3.5% increase in appropriations for 05. That would allow us uh, to be able to fund uh, additional $400,000 of revenue uh, to be able to support the appropriations if the council so wished. That would put the tax levy at 7.7%. But even with that, there would still be over $3 million of requests that would not be funded. So if the 400000 I mentioned on here uh, was granted, in addition, that that would, uh, with the reductions also in unemployment and severance pay, that would save about 11 jobs and services to the community. And I know right now we don't have time this evening for you to hear from all the departments but obviously there's major uh, service impacts that will go along with this. And hopefully we'll have that discussion at the future meeting. Um, I outlined there at the bottom of the memo uh, what the tax levy increases would be to be able to fund all these. I realize they're high, uh, but you have to, uh, you had some presentations tonight by uh, transit and the library, so you understand their needs. And I know it's a, a very tough question put upon you uh, but the document that was passed by council before was for us to have the departments go back to 2004 as their base budget 
adjust those by the revenues. Uh, we're also adjusting them for um, the salary trust contingency, any uh, the severance pay and unemployment comp. And that is the outcome that, that's reflected in the, that analysis that we have given to the departments that they have to look at reducing their requests. And we are going to be going through that process here after we get an indication from the council uh, what level of funding that they feel that they can give to the departments to assist them with this. And so we hope we can get that clarification then next Monday on the 13th of the special meeting so we know how what level of resources we have uh, to be able to fund next year's budget. So that's very Alderman quick. Groff. Yeah. Groff. Thank you. I just want to say that with what Rich presented here, um, we, we're counting on everybody to give us some long range planning. Quick fixes or uh, temporary situations will not do and will just be further behind the eight ball when, when we come to year end 2005 as we're experiencing in 2004, all the concessions that, that we negotiated and, and the city um, employees gave us are now coming back and we're saying, well, okay, now you have to fund that as of the beginning of 2005. So we're starting a step back and, and we're losing ground. And if we do the same thing in 2005, um, we'll lose even more ground. So think of long range planning and um, think outside the box. And, We'll get through this year and the year after, too. Yes, we will. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Mayor. I know Rich and his office have a lot to do, but if at some point in time you could put together a, a glossary of terms that are being used and defining layman terms so that a lot of us can understand what some of this stuff means, I'd appreciate I'll, that. I'll try to address that for the next meeting. If you have time. Otherwise. Certainly. Thank you. Okay. So next Monday night, 7 o'clock. Can you make six? Six. Six. All right, 6.15 next Monday night. Up here, we're going to work on this budget. Uh, we have a lot of work to do. We have to get it down so it's acceptable. And obviously, you heard it is not acceptable at where it is now, and we're just starting. So we have a lot of work ahead of us. So please be here next uh, Monday night, 6.15. If you can't make it, let me know ahead of time so we know if we're going to have a quorum or not. You won't be here. And remember to hand in your little green forms. Yeah, and please bring your forms if you haven't handed them in. Okay? We have a motion before us. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.